Ooh, studio lights. Fancy. <laughs> All right, so it's 10 o'clock at night, I think. It's like 9 something. No, it's 10. Yeah, it's 10 exactly. Ooh, wow. So we're starting a trans swap at 10 at night. I don't know why. Well, it's like 100 degrees all the time. So this is actually kind of a good time to do it. So here's my Tramac 3550. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the videos, I'll put a card up. You guys can check them out. I've done two videos of getting the truck prepped to take this trans. And now we're finally ready to actually mock it up, see if it'll go in. So we got a trans jack from Harbor Freight. My trans, I took the shifter off. You guys can't really see that yet. I mean, it's kind of a basic shifter, but I don't know. We'll put it on once it's actually in. I've cut out the trans tunnel. I've put new floor pans in, and I've kind of gone just a little bit further than just a trans swap. Oh, geez, I'm stepping on the light. So there's a new floor pan. There's a full new floor pan, and then I cut out the spot for the trans tunnel. We have an American powertrain seven inch uh, depth bell housing to fit the input shaft of this transmission a center force twin disc clutch and a mcleod flywheel in there and i think that's it and an american powertrain engine backing plate i think as well uh, but yeah everything should slide in now uh so we're just going to put the tranny jack down here lift everything up it should pop actually right in and we'll go ahead and bolt it in and hold it up with jack and i've actually taken my measurement and i believe from the face of the bell housing to this line is where the edge of the shifter will go so the shifter should actually pop right up through here and it should fit perfectly so uh we'll get right into this put this thing under there and jack it up and pop it in see what it does yeah okay we are in alignment Yeah, touching. Yeah. We can't well, raise it enough. The bolt wasn't there, Greg. It would go in. You know that? Yeah, so I gotta cut right behind this bump. No, I'm saying I don't even think you need to do that. No, I definitely do. Like, I 100% do. Okay, so it's catching right about here. So there's about an inch. There's like one inch uh, from this little seam. And it's hitting right there. So you can see I've got like, I don't know, two and a half, three inches, and I'm gonna cut out a box, and then that'll allow us to clear the little shifter section that I've got. Um, but everything looks like it lines up pretty well, so I'm gonna take it out, trim it, and put it back in. Well, this ain't OSHA approved. This ain't gonna be quiet, and it is late. But we know his neighbors are up right now, so we're gonna do it anyway. All right, so I just want to, we're gonna come back. It's been about a week, actually. You guys haven't seen it, but it's been about a week since I've been working on the video, putting the transmission in. So if I remember correctly, the last clip I did, uh, we put the transmission in the truck and then it was night out. Now we come back like a week and a half later. I had a really, really bad clutch issue of the clutch pedal just falling to the floor because I run a Z-bar setup and the original long like linkage, the bar, the rod with the little like cap end that engages the clutch fork was way too short. So the clutch pedal just fell to the floor. And I talked to a lot of guys. I actually made a video asking you guys for help. You guys were incredibly helpful. Thank you guys so much for that. Massive shout out to Thunderhead289 for helping me out with uh, the Z-Bar setup. You're amazing, really, really appreciate that. And all the guys that sent me messages, you guys are so, so, so helpful. I'm still replying to them today. So thank you guys so much for that. But we did actually manage to get the transmission in with the clutch working and the shifters in, and I can't wait to show you this. This is super, super cool, and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of what we did to get this thing to work, because it's not necessarily something that would just be told to do. It's not, it's kind of like something you gotta figure out trial and error, so I'll show you guys what I did. So you guys ready for the surprise? Oh my gosh. Look at that. And it's got the Hurst T-handle on it. So this is actually the shifter I was going through, uh, I'm gonna use. 
if you guys do follow my Instagram at the Craig 909, I did post a lot of sneak peeks about this shifter. This is the shifter I'm going with. This is an original bench sheet T handle that someone cut up. You can see it was all welded, and then we cut the bottom of it off. It was for a side. It was actually for the the original three speed where it has the two arms on the side. It's got a bunch of rods using it, so we cut it off, drilled two holes that were tolerance correctly, and actually made this thing work. Um, and it might not actually hit the bench sheet. So that's something I'm going to get into in a second is my seating situation. But look at this. This is like super short throw. Like this thing is going to legit feel like a car, which is incredible. I'm super, super happy about that. Everything fits now. You can actually, you might not be able to see it, but there you can actually see the rod down there. I'll show you that in a second, but go ahead and push the clutch pedal and just like, it's very, very stiff, but you can feel the throw big time, huh? Yeah. So super, super happy with that. So now we'll get under the truck and I'll actually show you guys exactly what's going on. For those of you who might be considering a Z-Bar setup with a TKO, this is very, very important and very hard to figure out the first time. So I'm gonna kind of help you out with this. All right guys, so I'm underneath the truck. I've actually put the Z-Bar in. I'll probably take it out again just to kind of clean it up, paint it or whatever, um, and actually have it bolted in correctly. This is pretty loose right now. I gotta tighten this also. So what I did is this is a 3 8 by 24 thread Heim join in. Uh, I got it off of eBay. I got a pack of eight of them for like 24 bucks. That's what that guy is right there. And then it's a piece of all thread I got from Napa because that seemed to be the only place I could find it. That's also 3 8 on 24 thread. And then the nuts on the bottom are 3 8 on 24 as well. And this is about twice the length of the factory rod. Um, and you kind of cut it long. I cut it about twice as long on the thread portion of the other one. Um, I pretty much doubled the amount of threads and cut it. Um, and then I allowed this rod to sit there and I just adjusted it with these little two lock nuts and that can move it up or down. And as you can tell, there's tension on the clutch fork right now. So it's it's there, it's got tension on it. Um, and then the rod comes up from the floor. That's this guy right here, as you can see. And then it'll swivel everything and that's pretty much how it works. Uh, this is just at a funky angle because I haven't tightened it down yet. But the clutch does work. Uh, I'll probably fasten that down real quick and then so it doesn't ovalize anything. And then we'll go ahead and I'll show you the clutch and how it works. All right, Sam. Uh, let me get my camera in the right spot. Okay, so hopefully my flashlight allows... There we go. Okay, Sam, go ahead and press the clutch a couple times. So I hope you guys can see that, but the clutch actually is engaging. Dude, it's so stiff. When I push on it, my back pushes on the gas tank and I can feel the gas tank bowing. Oh, there we go. Do it again. So, like I said, this is a GoPro. I hope you guys can see it. I can't tell if you guys can see it, but I think you guys can. Uh, the throttle bearing is pressing up against that. Everything's working. It's a super stiff setup. You can see it working. Um, so everything rotates good. Although I think this rod, the upper rod where the clutch pedal hooks do right up here, that one I kind of probably need to adjust. It looks like it's not really sitting in there very well. But the Heim setup works amazing. Uh, that Heim setup works amazing though. Like look at it, it's just rotating nice and freely. How's that pedal feel, buddy? Yeah, if I had to switch feet. <laughs> yeah, so leg day is gonna freaking suck with this thing. This is a center force clutch, which is incredibly stiff. I didn't realize how stiff this is. It might get better, probably not, but it'll probably loosen up a little bit after I drive it. But uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, actually put the cross member in and start mocking stuff up and get everything ready. And we should actually, if I get the starter and be able to fire it. All right, so I got my cross member out. It was covered in grease when I degreased it, power washed it, and I'm gonna put the rubbing alcohol on it, clean it, and then we're gonna put the same undercoating I put on my floor on this, a black kind of rubberized undercoating. So it doesn't look like trash. All right, so we have one slight predicament that you might want to keep in mind, and that would be, hmm, so we're in third, that would be fourth, and then it puts it back in third. <laughs> so this is neutral. So, yeah. I definitely need to get a bench seat shifter. But look at it, that looks really cool. I'm satisfied with that. Although, if I hop in it, My clutch, the pedal doesn't really go very far, but you can see, like you can feel when that thing moves. You can hear it. You can hear the little weight sitting on there. So, I like where the shifter is right now. If I could get it in the same spot, but actually make this arc, that would be amazing, but I don't know how, how well that'll work. So yeah, bench seat, no bueno, but we're only gonna be running the bench seat for a little while. But uh, yeah, so we'll be all right. 
The bench seat's gonna be kind of just a temporary thing until I can make my brackets for buckets. I have the metal, but I just wanna drive my truck, so I'm gonna make the bench seat work. It's easier to buy a shifter that already fits and make whole seat brackets and put seats, and that'll set me back another week, so. Well, that's a bummer, but uh, well, now I know I just need to get a get a shifter, and I'm gonna clean the cross member and get ready to put that sucker in. All right, guys. So our transmission's in. Everything's bolted up. Uh, the only thing that isn't in right now is a cross member, just kind of sitting on the jack. Uh, I need to get that in. That's getting painted right now. I got my drive shaft length measured, so that's coming in pretty soon. I gotta get the speedo cable and the reverse light cable, and then I will have that stuff. We're going to put fluid in it. I got my starter in on the motor and I need to figure out the bench seat situation. Everyone's saying, uh, dude, why don't you move it forward to one of these shifter locations? And because you have to buy a different shifter, it's not just put this here, obviously it's not gonna fit. So you have to buy the whole shifter and to get another short shift uh, shifter, because I can't use a regular shifter, I don't want to, because I don't want to have a foot long a throw. If I got another short shifter in one of these locations, I've seen them upwards of $500. So it's not happening when I can just spend 140 bucks and get a bench seat shifter for now. And then once I do my seat brackets, which I have the metal for, I just want to get my truck driving, uh, then I can go ahead and take the seat out, put buckets in it, put this, this uh, shifter back on, and we'll be good to go. Uh, but yeah, so everything's looking good and I hope this video wasn't too long and hopefully we can make this guy purr pretty soon Mater is gonna purr real good. He's got some good upgrades coming on the way. I hope this is gonna be fun Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to drive this again. You have no idea I mean just look at this thing new floors Oh boy! I can't wait to get rid of this bench seat. I'm sorry but guys, but I freaking hate it. Oh, this is like really direct. So the bite point's right there and then it kicks you off. See the transmission move around? So that's neutral. <laughs> that's in gear. But uh, I cannot wait to drive this. This is gonna be so much fun. All right guys, so we're ending off the video in the truck, even though it doesn't drive, but I'm gonna end up in the truck. So like the video if you did enjoy it. Let me know what you do think down in the comments below. All your questions and comments are really, really helpful in the last few weeks. So thank you guys so much for those who did comment. It really means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, but hit the notification bell on my name if you are not getting notifications for my videos and you wanna know when a new video comes out, that would really mean a lot to me. And I really, really cannot wait to make the video of me actually driving this thing. That's something I've just been wanting to do. And my gift to myself is gonna be driving this down to like a Best Buy or something and getting myself a new camera. So you guys will see that and hopefully all this stuff is going to unfold pretty soon and i'm just really excited to share it with you guys so thank you guys so much for your support it really really means a lot to me smash the like button on the video that really mean a lot to me i finally got it in i finally got my clutch working that was like my biggest downfall of the swap and just look at how good this looks just like feast your eyes on this thing like this whole setup this is like six months no this is like eight months in the making i finally got this thing in i bought it like eight months ago so this is like no nine months ago this is like a nine month thing this is just awesome so regardless I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And then there's the Craig. We're going to see who's winning. I think Franklin's going to win.